I'm only one I'll be there to save the day Superman got nothing on me Oh, welcome in. We got Charlie Puth himself. <laughs> Temple. The one, the only, the, the K9, Joey Kemple, and the last king, Anthony Donahue, and of course, my co host, Dylan Perone. Week five is done, week six is ahead of us. Uh, how is everybody? Doing good, doing good. Same. Killing it. Awesome. That's good. Uh, we got a couple matchups to recover or go over, like usual. Uh, we're going to start with Don's matchup. Let's pull up the screen. Don, I know you had a slow start, and uh, you ended up well, – you were 0-3 at one point, correct? Yes, sir. So that means you're on a two-game winning streak. Uh, it should feel good. You have one of the top points in the league. Uh, we knew it was only a matter of time if you just kept staying on track and, and believing. Uh, how does it feel to get two wins in a row, especially a big win like this? It banked up. Almost put up um, 190 points. was huge. My guys finally are starting to pick up, which is good. Brady and Evans is going to be scary if they keep going. Henry's just running through people, which is awesome. Um, definitely need that jersey soon. But um, I'm getting points up and down. Putting in Tony was huge. He had a big game last week despite the team getting massacred, meaning the Giants. Um, but he'll be good. Pitts finally had a coming out party against the Jets and just needed a new continent. So that really helped. Seems tough to have to rely on a bunch of uh, giant players to hit each year, especially with their history of uh, injuries. So just whatever's plaguing that team for the last 10 years almost at this point. Um, must be even tougher to be a fan, unfortunately. Um, but at least Tony hit. Do you think it, it, you can find some consistency in a, in a rookie like that? I think with him, but the problem is we don't have Jones for don't know how many games. And Glennon hasn't – Glennon played a few games last year, but I don't know how good he's going to be. So hopefully they keep getting the ball to Tony. And then losing Galladay didn't help. But he really hasn't been much of a factor on my team this year. He's kind of had a slow start to his giant career. Yeah, he's a rookie. He needed some injuries to find him some volume. He's he's averaging 10 and a half targets the last two weeks. So if you can find that kind of volume, I don't see why you wouldn't be a fine, at least flex option for you, which is really what you need. Um, we talked about your depth. If, if you had some injuries take place on the, especially on that giant roster, uh, started with Landry and then Slayton going down. Um, so you kind of were forced to start him really, right? Yeah. Um, why not grab someone from the waiver to plug in as well? You have an empty bench uh, spot right now. I took him late, and uh, I was going to see how he did. The first three games, he had negative two yards, and now he's starting to come on um, in his own, and I think he'd be a great player to keep in if he stays consistent. Yeah, for sure. So do, um, have you looked at anybody on the waivers in general? Like, even uh, I think I looked at him Brandon seen. Bolden because he was getting more points okay. than starting the shell. Because Hilaire's out at least three games, I said, which is kind of killer. Yeah, man, I would, uh, one, fill your roster, but two, just look at these extra options. Now we got bye weeks coming in, you know. Uh, bye weeks actually start this week. I'm not sure if it affects you currently, but something to really start thinking about. Um, have you talked to anybody about trades? You don't have to, you know, express who or what, but have you been I tried that? to make a few moves that I thought, would benefit the team, but I didn't like what I had to give up to acquire what I was looking at, so I kind of yeah. just stuck to what I had. I mean, I know I had a poor start, but I'm starting to gain momentum, so I'm just trying to keep the team that I have. And uh, not only does Tony, crabs. Tony is gaining some momentum as a rookie, but so is your uh, your tight end Kyle Pitts. I know you have Gasecki to plug in this week. Kyle Pitts seems to be on a buy. Do you feel confident plugging in Kyle Pitts as your tight end one going forward? After I mean, I took him pretty high because he was the next available tight end that was, like, best. And, I mean, it's at a slow start, but he's a rookie. But if he he plays the way he played on Sunday, I'll be 
thrilled. Absolutely. And of course, the big blow for your team is uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. That's the new thing that um, transpired. I know our co host, uh, Dylan, I think he ended up getting his, his uh, handcuff. And, uh, Daryl Williams? I know there's two of them. I always get the two confused sometimes. Was it Daryl Williams, uh, Dylan? Yep. Or is it Darren? Yeah, Daryl, right? I always thought Daryl was the better player there, but um, do we think uh, Daryl Williams can can give more production than CEH? Who really wasn't really performing anyway. Um, I don't know. Okay. I tried to I mean, pick him up, and now I know I got outbid, so that's fun. Did you drop any money? I don't, I don't want to like go into the transactions, but do you remember how much you dropped on it? I, I would only put like two dollars. How much I you went for? I put them in for two dollars. What'd you put it in for, though? Fifty something. I put oh, it in right. twenty-eight. Yeah, um, I knew a lot of people would have been. Actually, my logic behind this was I knew that Tucci Danny was the only team that really needed a running back, and they had fifty-five dollars left. So I put fifty-six dollars just so I couldn't lose it to them. So wow. that was my logic. <laughs> so I, that's. So I, I wanted him personally because Chris Carson was out and Debo Samuel was a bye week, so I would have probably at least served in flex. But, again, I didn't get him, and I wasn't getting him more than 28 – or I wasn't spending more than 28 on him. I mean, the way I see it is the Chiefs are still uh, – even though they're two and three, I think the Chiefs have the best offense in the NFL, if not top three, and he's the RB1 in there for the next couple right. of weeks. So, I just you just need a part of that, especially right. with uh, – I have Calvin Ridley on bye, so I'm, only, I'm at the very least going to probably throw Williams in my flex this week. Yeah, this happens every year. You see, like um, that that guaranteed RB one that goes down that uh, his handcuffs are actually on the waiver. I think this is the first time this year. So that was probably the hottest commodity yet this season on the waiver wire. Um, will it play out? Obviously, that's a whole other story. But uh, I know, you know, we understand that everyone is going to reach for him. Don, you have a lot of money to spend in your fab. You probably have all hundred, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so definitely, you know, get ready to spend that at some point. It doesn't carry over to next year, right? It's not like a savings account. That I appreciate that, but I'm not trying to like waste it in the beginning and not have anything at the end. I agree. I, I agree. might need it. No, just try to focus at uh, some point, try to use it. You know what I mean? I'm I trying agree. to do the same thing too. I, I'm not sure where I'm going to use it, but um, let's talk about your opponent last week, not, not your upcoming match, but let's go back a second. Um, you, you beat the 0 and 5 um, Luke Liggs. He actually renamed his team 0 and 5. He's no longer the Bluefish, Bluefish Blitz or. Evolving Bluefish. Um, what do you think about his team and, and everything he's been doing with the trades? And all the I, he really screwed himself from the start because he really didn't draft well. Um, he's picking guys that were hurt and or weren't even on a team. So I think that kind of screwed him from the start. Yeah. How do you think his team performed last week? With all that being said. I think it was what only 118 points. Yeah, I think it was the crazy. final. I was just freaking out because every time someone's like, "Oh, I'm gonna lose to Don," they went <laughs> winning. So when he put all <laughs> five, it kind of gave me some uh, KBGBs. Yeah, man, I feel you on that. You think Luke can bounce back from 0 and five with his roster? I know he just made it. He's in the process of another trade right now, but. I don't know. I mean, I tried to trade with him last week, and I guess I wasn't given enough because I was going for A.B. because it would have been nice to put A.B. in the flex and uh, have Brady and Mike Evans, but he wanted Hilaire. Yeah, A.B. is the one I didn't want to give up, but I had to give something up for what I got. A.B. is a monster. At least he can be a monster. And I didn't want to move Looks Hilaire. Good. I feel like Hilaire hadn't hit his uh, – not his ceiling, but, like, where he should be yet. Yeah. So your replacement plan for Hilaire is going to be Sony Michelle or possibly someone like Bolden off the waiver right now. It's kind of what you have to. Yeah, because like, Michelle's at. only projected six points, so I was like, um, going to see who else I got. Yeah, your team's been getting carried without Ch really performing the way he can, so that's good. You definitely want to get at least ten points from RB two, I guess. I agree. So I try to just see who. Yeah, just keep plug and play, keep trying things. You got trades options, you know. Some of us have multiple running backs we don't need, so. That is true. Um, so before we move on, Joey, um, what do you think about Luke's trading situation? I know you're very vocal, or at least want to be on the trades. Uh, what's, what, which trade are we talking about? <laughs> well, every, all of them. All, just all idea of, like, literally a trade every other day at this point. 
Well, I mean, first off, he traded away a player, and then he wants to get him back. It just doesn't make sense. Um, where is that? Where is that trade? Is it in the chat? It's everywhere. I mean, there's. It's been with three of us at this point that I can recall last week between me, Dylan, the big, yeah, between you, Dylan, him, and and then tonight I mean, is just, uh, Nick. It just doesn't make off. sense to me that the way he's going at it, trying to trade away the player that he first traded, and then he wants it back. I don't know what he's thinking, but I mean, Luke's just going to do Luke at the end of the day. He's not. You think the Zaz really messing up his mindset? I think the Zaz really messing up his mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, clearly it's not benefiting him yet, so we'll see no. if he can bounce back. I'm not sure what point you're out. I think I know there's an extra week this year, but I think somewhere around Owen. I think Owen eight would solidify you as being eliminated. Yeah, I went. What was it? I went. So Owen over yet. I came back and won. So I mean, he's not yeah, out yet. It's not over yet. Yeah. All right, moving on, Joe. We'll just jump into your match. Um, obviously, you're you're the opposite end of the spectrum. You're five and zero. Oh. You've won two years in a row. You beat me both years in the finals. <clears throat> uh, probably, probably the fastest growing rivalry between you and the commissioner and uh you, you kind of took him to the bank on this one it wasn't your best week but still you beat him by yeah. 26 points so that's a pretty good win i had 84 points going into this match and i really didn't think i was going to pull it off but uh, i hey, talk up... about that because we, we got some intel from our co-host on uh you giving up yeah no i actually this time i actually really thought i wasn't going to win this match just because of going into the game Going into like the first, going in after the half, alone Mahomes wasn't performing, and usually that's how he does. But Hill and Kelsey like really didn't do much either in the first half. But um, yeah, I mean, Sal had a hundred something points going in. He had a, I think a forty point lead, a forty point lead going into this game, um, on Monday night. I mean Sunday night. But uh, what do you have? He had um. He had Diggs playing. Diggs didn't, Diggs didn't do what he needed him to do. So thank God he did that. He didn't do that. Otherwise, it would have been a closer matchup. It would have been uh, tough. But I ended up pulling it out in the end. Yeah, for a team that's hitting almost on all cylinders, <clears throat> they're not getting Diggs in the end zone. That's the only thing he's missing out on at the moment. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he Cooper's kind of been the opposite. Himself. He's not getting the production, but he's finding the end zone. I mean, his two, Eckler, two running backs are only realistically supplied him this, this week. Yeah, but his, his two running backs are going to be great in general. Yeah. They, they got four touchdowns together. So, I mean, um, Eckler got pushed into the end zone at one point. If you guys watched that crazy game between Cleveland, I did. Yeah. They, they like they literally threw, they tried to push him out, but he well, he tried to bring him down. But instead of bringing him down, he brought him. He down wanted to go down to, to run the yeah. clock, and they yep. they pushed him in to get the and they threw him in the end zone, yeah. which was an awesome but, uh, awesome thing, I think. But great so, for fantasy owners, I was so. uh, I was really big on Tannehill going into this draft too. So right there and then, if I didn't get Mahomes, I was definitely going to go for Tannehill because I think I mean, a lot of Tannehill's problem is not having AJ Brown healthy and balling. yeah. Although and Julio, I mean, they have both been out. So I mean, both of our quarterbacks really didn't perform that well this week. Do, do we think uh, Tannehill can get back to some more consistency? Finding the end zone a little bit more. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, yeah, Sal's going to need it if he wants to push for a playoff spot. But, I mean, I think Dan Hill is going to wake up and eventually get to where he used to be. This is other quarterback. Oh, Mayfield. All right. I mean, my thing is how long do you just keep relying on Dan Hill? Um, yeah. You know, how many games can you lose with him? Uh, I know Sal will find a way. Uh, I think his team looks good. His flexes are tough. Uh, it's just going to be rough into the bye weeks. Yeah, like next yeah. year. For your team, I think we all know – we all knew what your team was coming in and the, the firepower it could have with the three headed horse, which are literally just fundamental players for any team. Henderson could be – I, I actually, at this point, sadly have to admit that I think Henderson is a league winner. Uh, I think he's just proving it. Yeah, that was – His that floor was is literally game, 17 yeah. a week, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's more upside there, which is crazy. Yeah. What if he gets in the end zone twice? So – I mean, look, um, Patterson up. might be a league winner as well, and so is Mike Will. It's just, it's, it's not even. It's almost hard to talk about because you already had the other three, and to fill them in with these three guys, and and uh, no, I mean, I think that's all you have right now. There's there's some other upside, but that's just crazy. Oh, you still have Gronk, who's not back. You could easily flex Gronk in when he's healthy. Which yeah, I mean, Ayuk well. isn't performing to what he supposedly was supposed to perform for this um, season, yeah. but I mean, hopefully, he gets back to. 
the form, and obviously my defense is looking rough right now. I'm gonna have to do something with that. Hey, are you purposely playing Kansas City, uh defense just to have the four-headed horse? Or is that just uh, was that a plug and play? No, that was a for fourteen plug points. Because uh, for one of the weeks, I, my defense was doing yeah. horrible, so I just picked up the Chiefs. Yeah, but I'm and they probably don't play defense that plays Buffalo or Dallas yeah. or Tampa Bay. Yeah, I may just hold off because they're playing the they're playing the football team this week, so I got yeah. a little bit of work yeah, to do. Better schedule the, coming up. Yeah, they still got some good players on that defense. Just, yeah, they're, they're really not performing rough. well. Um, so Kelsey's a beast. Hills, I mean, this is a bad week for Hill, obviously, but he had that one week last week. Was it? Yeah, fifty points. He's had two weeks that that are probably better than couple receivers top receivers combined for, for five weeks so it's retarded um what'd you patterson um what made you go after him in the in the waiver wire you picked him up for I'll, free I, pick, I got him for free yeah no one no one put anything on him um i didn't know i read up on him a couple weeks ago after he had that big week i read up on a podcast about him on how he's going to be the next he could be one of one of the main targets in the atlanta, in atlanta so then I ended up looking yeah. more research. So I was like, let me just put in a waiver request. I didn't put no money down. I should have. I think I didn't because no one else went for him. But um, yeah, he's a wide receiver running back. So I can put him in three of the positions I can. Sometimes he, a quarterback. He, um, yeah. And he ended up working out for me. So I think it was probably, it was a really good pickup for me. It helped me out a lot, actually. Crazy, man. You should so, call him the utility knife. Position. But because I so you know you know what's wild, Bill. I, I feel like I look at this game from a vacuum, and uh, it's just on paper even, and it's just like, you know, how, you you would think Sal has a stronger team with all these big names, but if you if you just look at the way that it's gone in twenty twenty one, Joey actually has by far possibly one of the strongest teams in fantasy football across all leagues. Honestly, it's it's that strong. Um, yeah. Did you really see Joey's team coming this this? put together i mean with anderson and he just his qb one and two were horrible going in it, was crazy. Uh, it, it, it just literally doesn't matter because joey's managing the team so regardless <laughs> of who he drafts does not matter the kid gets it done every single year he's just an anomaly and he's, he's actually improving literally can't be stopped at this point like he might i don't know he might just go with a clean, clean sweep of the league well, that, that's kind of why we, we brought tonight together. We um we have Junior the Red Nose Big Nose Reindeer himself red with nose, this cool big nose reindeer. <laughs> with this okay, 3D right. glasses. Uh, can you see better? Like that, huh? Dude, yeah, I can actually <laughs> cut that up. So like um, if anybody is to stop him, we're uh, I guess what we have to say it's going to be you. So what do you have to say about that before we jump into your match? Um, I think me and Joey actually. Well, obviously, we're the top two teams, but I think, like you said, I'm going to be the only one to hopefully stop Joey because, I mean, I – well, can you switch over to points four? I think I'm ahead uh, by 115 points. Yeah, 100. Oh, no. it's got, I think it's less than that, actually. I think I'm I think third. I think it's less than that, but – right? Yeah, it's 60 – it's about it's about 40, 48 points. And that's uh, it's a decent amount. And the third – Behind them is who, 747. I have 802 points for, which is actually pretty, I would say, disgusting for only five weeks in. I mean, four and one, yeah, but what are you going to do? You can't win them all. Let me see. Go back they to have uh, Joey ahead of you in the power rankings. Yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, listen, he's, he's five and oh. He's got to be up top. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be at number one, but I think if someone's going to beat him, it's going to be me. Yeah, I mean, you have almost 50 more points than him. Right, especially listen, especially if our bye weeks align up properly, you never know. It could be someone else. It could be me. But so he's not. He's not going to finish at the feet. Is, he plays Luke Liguori the week that the Chiefs have a bye, which is big for him. Uh, that's because, yeah, but, huge for him. But, but that's week twelve, and by then, if, if I'm in the playoffs, oh, he already quit. He already better. quit. <laughs> uh, no, I'm saying that's big for him for uh, his undefeated streak. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's, that's huge. Yeah, that's, I don't. I don't think he's going to stay undefeated the entire time. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm going to stay undefeated either. It'd be That's cool, tough. but I don't think it'd be awesome if I did. Yeah. Guys, I don't think Joey has the easiest of schedules either. If we're looking at it, I'll be honest. We all, but we all have, we all play each other, don't we? I play. Yeah, you. I mean, essentially we do, but it, it does matter where it falls sometimes, and um, also the, yeah. the three you play twice. 
Hmm. I don't think Joey has the easiest schedule. And I think he's still managing his team is just that good personally. He hasn't, they haven't seen each other yet, which is, you know, could make right. the setup schedule a lot stronger. He is good. Um, and you know what? I, but I he does, say he does see those two, which are very good. Actually, I'll talk when I get to my, my matchup. But again. No, yeah, I think, uh, is there anything else to touch up on for you, Joey, before we move on? Want to touch up on your opponent or anything? What, for next week? No, for your, your last week's matchup. With no, you I mean, and, I and just, the commissioner. I, I mean, like I said, I was big on Tannehill. So just hopefully he shows up in the next couple of weeks, I think. I mean, I like Sal's team. But I mean, like I said, I, thought, I really thought I was going to lose going into down 40 points with them not actually playing to their game. But. I was just say, but Joey actually has a running back he could trade at this point. That's how deep his team has become, little so, so, Don, if you need a running back, he can maybe give you Michael Carter or, I mean, Gio Bernard or Zach Moss. Thank you. I'll <laughs> take a look. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. And uh, I got, then I got fucked over by Yahoo again when the other fucking thing on the waiver wire, but it's whatever at this point. Hey, Don, let's go. Uh, Dill, let's go over that. What Joey has an empty bench spot right now. So, what's going on with that? Why is why is he getting screwed? Do you have well, what happened? Idea? Was I uh, tried picking up Najoku. I dropped someone, tried picking up Najoku on my phone on the app, and it didn't work. And then I got a notification saying Sal picked him up. So, I picked him up for free earlier, but this yeah, is not too no, much. I, I don't it, know but, what's going on with the app or what. Dill, what would stop him from doing that? Is there, is there, I mean, there's been some connection issues with the app, but I don't know if that's like. I don't actually know. I don't anything. actually know. I would just keep trying, Joe. Gronk and Fuller are both in the IR. So, I mean, I have an empty bench spot for now. Yeah, it can't be your roster spot because you're actually missing a roster spot just like Don. Um, I guess because you moved someone in the IR. Uh, but, uh, uh, but interesting. I'm just going to have to you know, find someone else and make just, it work. Just keep trying. Don't don't give up on it if that's yeah, going to no, happen. I'm, Maybe it's a glitch. Trying. I don't know. Well, um, you're saying you, you didn't on. get the guy you put in for. I don't get it. Hey, it happened two weeks in a row, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, Joe Junior, before we end up into your match, do you want to talk about um, mm-hmm. the conspiracy that happened on the Hazard Soccer Field? <laughs> Which conspiracy? Oh, it's, well, it's true. It's With our true? lineups, it's not true. It's, it's, it's true. I mean, I, I, I can vouch that we tried to change our lineups, but um, yeah. I just want you to touch on it, and uh, we still got the victory. So I'm not sure how much we really. Yeah, I was going to say if you want to pull my matchup, I was going to touch on it when I got to the victory. You still, you also pulled off the win too, so I guess it worked out. So a few things. All right, so a lot of people at the beginning said when I get to bye weeks, if I have injuries, I'm going to lose this, I'm going to lose that. But this week, not only did I have an injury. But I also had a failed lineup session because of the hazard soccer field. So, I mean, sour as a soccer tournament, pouring rain. Uh, Dalvin Cook is out. We get the notification. So, I put Madison in. Chris Carson's out. So, I put Madison in. Chris Carson goes on the bench. Perfect. Great. We get home. Games are starting. Pouring rain. So, again, we couldn't check our lineups again after that because, I mean, what time was it, Dalvin? Like 12 30. Anyway, we until like the very last minute. We even had the Jets game on. We had it on. Well, we on talked about it probably game. around. 10 30 11 when the game was going on but uh the last game i think something like that but then we, i brought up to you uh, to right before yep yeah. you came running over like to me. We, have, we have yep he's like oh we have we have like 50 minutes to check our line Twelve forty one, and we figured it out and apparently it didn't save so all i gotta say is that i had an injured rb1 an rb1 on my bench and i still pull out the win going into monday night football i was down about i think it was 80 points it was i had 70 mm-hmm. points he had 120, I think it was 121. So it's, that's about 50 points. So, and then once Marquise Brown scored, I was down about, about almost a hundred points. Either way, at the end of the night, I, I scored a hundred points to come back and win the game, 105 to be exact. And that's just but disgusting. I think we should really disgusting. bring up, obviously three, that's three kind players. of like. Realistically two players. Of, that's the story with the, with the whole lineup thing. And it worked out for us, but. We should really talk about how you ended up winning this match because I think 99.9% of people in America would have never thought you would have came no. back and won this game. I honestly, and I, think I had it no hope. for a lot of people. Yep. I honestly, I, I put down as a loss. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, I was already starting to look forward to next week. I was like, all right, I'm going to have to bounce back. Where am I going to fall in the standings? And you know what? Monday Night Football started. And I saw Lamar going crazy. I saw that one pass to Andrews. I was like, dude, I was like, this, this might happen. I was like, Marquise Brown had no receptions. But then he had he had the one touchdown reception. But either way, I had Lamar, so I was getting points, and he was getting points. So it was kind of the same difference no matter what. Um, but I just needed Andrews to score as well. 
I need to name Hines to do something, but he obviously did nothing. Um, but just put it this way, if I had Alexander Madison in the lineup, I would – what, I break 100 or no? I think I would have broke a, a 200 by one point. Yeah, yeah, almost like 20 points, I believe, so. 201? He had, like, 26 points, I think. Well, yeah, absolutely yeah, 26, 26. But that's still – that's besides the point, obviously, because it didn't work out. But yep, exactly. um, I just think it's even crazier that he actually also had Mar- uh, Marquise Brown on yeah, the other Brown. side. Yep. Uh, I think that could be well, one of the craziest comebacks in, a, in almost ever. That was, that was definitely insane. Fantasy. It was down to the, the last minute. The last minute, literally. And that game affected fantasy across the world at this point. Um, yep. It was crazy, too, because I people... mean, who scored the game-winning touchdown, Marquise Brown? Yeah, well, that was the other th- on the other side. Yep. Uh, literally, if you didn't have Andrews, you probably would have just lost straight, straight up. I would have so. lost. Yeah, I would have lost. Definitely. Uh, I think... There was a lot of I've heard stories of people having one percent chance to win and and for, you know they've actually came back and won this game. I, I, had, I, I personally turned this game off at halftime. Yep, I had twenty one. I, I had homework to do and I was just like, this is just distracting me. It's how boring this game is. So I'm turning it off. And then yeah, it came I, back very quick, very quick. I, I missed everything. I literally missed everything here too. Um, how was your take on that match in general? Just the game. Man. The game was phenomenal. Um, yeah. It was just unbelievable. That's probably the craziest comeback. Probably the craziest comeback I've ever seen. Um, just the fact that it was literally two players that combined for almost 100 points, uh, Lamar and Mark Andrews. And the fact that Chris had Hollywood Brown kind of counteracting while this was going on was insane. I, I wasn't even checking this matchup because I kind of like wrote this matchup off. Like I kind of like figured junior law. So like I stopped that, checking. That I was the same way. And then I saw like everyone freaking out in the group chat and I was like, wait a minute. And then I looked and I saw he was up or he was like about to be up. And I was like, wait a minute. This is, yeah. is this even possible? Um, I also want to say this. Why do I feel like Chris Camero is on the back end of every single Monday night uh, game <laughs> losing? <laughs> that is true. That is true. This is wild for Chris, man. I, like, I generally feel bad for him. He has the second most points in the entire league. I just want to make this make this known now. So if there were no uh, matchups and you just went off by whose team was the best, Chris would be in second place right now. Like, actually, mm-hmm. like there is literally there's no debate like his team. He has the second most points in the entire league and he's one in four. Yep. I feel disgusted for team. him. His team is amazing. This is one of the best teams he's ever drafted. And I, I don't even know what to say. He put up nearly 160 and lost. Um, well, also, wow, we're looking at Herbert on his bench. Elephant in the room. Yeah, oh, I didn't want to leave the elephant in the room, guys. I was trying to yeah. make sure he caught up on yep. us. Yeah, Dill's got either way, either way, I would have still beat him by, by Herbert. Oh, my God, look uh, at Herbert on his bench. Is, I mean, I don't know the logic of not starting Justin Herbert, but um, that's a problem. Well, I mean, oh, Kirk Cousins against Detroit Lions. He doesn't, sometimes but. he doesn't help himself either, but he, this kid, this poor kid is very unlucky, man. I, it's unbelievable. I mean, just honestly, though, this this – this game has to go down and, and junior his, literally his, messed his up his, his benching thing or whatever. And still won. Something. I know. I still won. either way. I would have won even if he had Herbert in, but I, I like Although he has, I he has my handcuff, by the way, Dill. you should know that you should know how this feels already. <laughs> so that's, 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 that's why I have him. That's why I have him. It happens every year. Happens I took every Don's year, handcuff man. now to even it out. <laughs> yeah. I'm not mad because I would have only had, I think five or six points from the guy I was plugging in. So I mean, I'm saying other one, but, but yeah, I could see Junior being upset if he lost with that kind of points. Uh, I been, yeah. if, I, if I lost with 125 points, I would never. Play Chris's me. team. Chris's team is fine. We all know this. He just has to find a way to get wins together. He just has to find a way to, for <laughs> defending his opponent, like keeping his opponent from scoring a ridiculous amount of points every week. And there's nothing he can do about it. And listen, and just not start Cousins over Herbert. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's really no matchup to do that. But yeah, that's, well, I, I mean, think, he, I, played, think he, I think he gets that now. Cousins play the line. I, was, I mean, I, honestly, it's, I, don't know, I, I think you saw Herbert no matter what. I think Herbert's yeah, in an MVP the conversation. Defense, but yeah, I get, get where he was coming from. That's what I'm saying. I don't know he's if it was a good five, decision, dude. but I get where he's coming I could, from. Uh, yeah, I guess, I, I guess he could make an argument for it. But the Cleveland defense here, because the Chargers throw the ball a billion times a game. But wow! And yeah, we've all we've all learned this the hard way through fantasy at some point. It's just you know, start your guys. You know, oh, yeah. start start your start your ones if you have if they're healthy. You know, I don't get yeah. it. Sometimes quarterback is a matchup. Two great teams going uh, forward, I think. Yeah, he'll he'll be the one in fourteen to bounce back. That's for sure, or a one in fourteen that'll bounce back. <sighs> but these next two weeks are very crucial for him. Where's that leave Junior? Four and one. Yeah, he's the only four and one. Yes, sir. 
Junior, do you think you'll secure the playoffs? Um, how far do you think you'll get? What's your prediction? Um, what is it? The next so. week this year, or next, right? It's an extra week this year. Who do you yeah, think? Probably uh, eight, 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 eight or nine wins eight. is probably going to do it. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully, hope be seven I'm or eight. So we'll say yeah. Hopefully, I'm one of the first. Do you think you'll beat Joey if it's semifinals or finals? Or it'll be a good matchup. Honestly, it's going to depend on on if all our guys are healthy or not. To be honest with you, it's going to be yeah. But we need a real answer. Do you, do, you, do you think you could beat Joey, or do you think I, he's got you? No, I, th- I think I could. Honestly, I think I could. If, if, they, if my team comes out and plays like they did today and everyone's healthy, yeah, I think I definitely think I could. Joey, do you think you're going to yeah, beat I Junior? Think I'm very good you're, are you scared of his team? I mean, I think it's going to be a close matchup, but it, uh, let me go look at his team real quick. Hold up for you. One, one, two, right? Here. And he's got Chris Carson's out at the moment. Like every, Lamar, so. Lamar himself can, Lamar and Mahomes basically Debo. can match up together. But I mean, you get Hopkins and Coop, they have, they have their self in like a 40 point game like they're capable of. And yeah, I think Junior's gonna pull out with the win. But I mean, our tight ends too match up together. But I mean, obviously he has the bigger hand in the running back situation. So, I mean, yeah. I think well, it's gonna you, be you would think that. But well, I know that. Yeah, he yeah, obviously. You would think that. Exactly. Yeah, but you have Henderson and uh, Cordell Patterson. Henderson, just, yeah. So yeah, it's not safe on that. I think it's gonna be a close. Tight game. ends are pretty close. I mean, it just really depends on like if our players perform. I think it's gonna be a definitely high scoring game. So, uh, personally, honest opinion, I think this could be a great Super Bowl matchup. Yeah. Assuming I mean, both teams stay healthy. And stay I team. wouldn't mind it being the finals matchup. I mean, either way, the trophy is going to stay in the house. This has to be the favorite, though, right? I mean, one, two. This has to be the absolute favorite right now. Yeah. Unless, top, like, two, uh, top two guard ranks until Let's something just gets... this way. If, if I don't win, if I don't win this year, Joey can't win because I'm sick of seeing his damn yeah. trophy. I mean, we've seen every year that the top two teams don't always get there, though. But, I mean, it's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Look, at, look at you. Look at you, Sal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. And this, you know what, this week too, there's a lot, like you said, there's a lot of bye weeks. I have Debo Samuel on a bye week. So I did a couple. What did I, what did I pick up? I picked up uh, what's his face? Uh, that Bill's uh, wide receiver. Jesus, I can't think. Oh, on the Chiefs? <sighs> Pringle? No, Bill, the Bill's wide receiver. I picked him up this week to maybe throw him in flex. <clears throat> no, I can't think of his name. Gabriel Davis? No. Nano Sanders is already on the team. No, oh, Beasley? No, Beasley, they're all on teams already. Nope. The hell is it? Go back real quick. I can't think of his name. Zach. Uh, oh, you mean KJ Osborne? Osborne. Uh, Minnesota. No, no. Right. Uh, Minnesota. I don't know why I said uh, Bills. Yeah, that was a good pick. I, I, I dropped. I yeah, yeah that whole that whole uh, receiving core is struggling right now. Even Thielen, um, Jefferson, yeah, listen, obviously. Absolutely. But I think I think a lot of it has to do with, with my though. guy. No, but I think I know Madison did good, but I feel like for some reason without Cook there and rolling, it's affecting the rest of the team. I, I know, I, but it is weird because Madison is running the ball. So something's off with the with the Minnesota Vikings. Madison had twenty five touches. Twenty five touches. Yeah, no, I know. Um, they're they're just getting behind in general, and just they can't throw it. I don't know. They'll get out of that, I think. Um. So, Don, are you still with us? He's not. No, he's not. He lives Don. Okay, I'm just checking. So Don is uh departed. Um, Mom so made we'll dinner. Move on to. My match and Dill's. I'll let Dill take our match. Our match. All right, well, um, I have one thing to say. Miles Gaskin <laughs> loses me last week with 0.3 points. He has two carries for three yards. This week he's on my bench and he scores 31. If I start him, I win this week. <laughs> if I don't start him, I will, I win last week. So, uh, yeah, there's two wins right there. Uh, cost me by Miles Gaskin. Uh, nevertheless, uh, phenomenal performance by your team. I think uh, the trades you made with your brother Luke were huge for you. Um, like James Robinson and Jamar Chase are two monsters. Uh, I don't know what he was thinking there, but this worked out really well for you. I also like your Dalton Schultz pickup, which I feel like that's like kind of slept on. We both had good tight end pickups, we actually. Did, yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, those are two guys that we can kind of just slide in every week and give you consistent value. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster went down, and Deontay Johnson is a little bit banged up, so Claypool, like, looked like the guy um, for Roethlisberger. So, like, literally, like, 
I kind of ran into a wall. Like there was nothing I could do. Every single player on your team did good. It was like kind of one of those, like I put up 153 points. That's not a bad week at all. And I left, yeah. and I left 31 points on my bench. Like I tried to get cute with the Zacchaeus uh, pick in my, in my second flex because re- all the receivers were out. Uh, it turned to just be the Kyle pitch show. So I lost there. Um, it's funny. I, I, I had Gaskin there too, and I ended up taking him out, but that's fantasy. But I think like, I have like a lot of hope going forward. Like, I think like my team did really good. Like Devonta Adams, it's crazy. Like he could do that again, what he did. Um, I'm probably going to start playing Gaskin. The good thing is Malcolm Brown had zero touches. So I think they finally know that Gaskin is the best running back there because it's apparent. Uh, Joe Mixon found the end zone. Samaj P. Ryan's out this week. Mixon should be back healthy. So it'll be all his backfield again. Terry McLaurin's a beast. Matt Stafford plays the Giants this week. Uh, Dawson Knox is a beast. I'm two and three, but I really like my team. And that's about all I have to say. Yeah. I just like your team more. <laughs> Yeah, I think like I think our teams are finally showing I think what they're more capable of, and at least on our better weeks. Um, obviously, I don't even have Dalvin Cook, and uh, you need to yeah. figure out how to get Gaskin in your flex and being consistent and trustworthy. Zach like we both understood the pickup there. There was no one else playing other than him and then Chajay Sharp, who's been on like the practice squad all year, I think. Um, and then I like, guess are, are you kind of struggling between the Stafford and, and Rogers each week, or are you just going by matchup? Uh, Stafford, because I traded Rogers with. Oh, that's right. It's done. So that's a wrap. It, it sometimes it's easier just to like not have to make the decision. To yeah, like, I almost like that. I don't have there. to make the decision. And my thought process with it is like, since I have Adam at Rogers and Adams, like, uh, if like if if Adams like if, if Rogers having a good day, it's probably gonna be Adams any like he's gonna have all the points anyways. So it's kind of like as long as I have like the main producer in that game, like might as well just get, just play Stafford. Just, I don't know. I kind of like, kind of like having someone in like a different game. I thought I liked the QB uh, receiver combo, but I don't know. Also Stafford, like it just looks really fucking awesome this year. Um, I freaking love Stafford this year. Yeah. I mean, he, he still had a decent I, game without the, without the one, I know it was the one touchdown and the interception. Yeah, he also I if you watch if you watch that point. if you watch that game, he threw a touch, he threw a pick in the red zone, like that was like really bad that he shouldn't yeah, have never yeah, threw. Yeah. And then, yeah. then also in the game, he got down to the one yard line. Literally, he yeah. threw it to Robert Woods. He got tackled at like the one, and then they ran it in with the running back. So like and Henderson, Robert, Henderson's taking a lot of the points. So yeah, or right, yeah, they ran it with Henderson. So right there, I was screwed out of six points. But like stuff like that, it's just like within a yard or two. That's that's nothing to be concerned about. I think Stafford's yeah. a QB one going forward. Um, it's too much firepower on that team not to find the end zone. Look at their look at his upcoming schedule. Oh, he's got such a soft schedule. Yeah, Giants, Lions, Texans. Um, Even on the tail end, there's a lot of firepower coming up. The rest of the year, mostly. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be starting him every week. So, yeah, it I mean, look at the is. first five teams they played, dude. I mean, that's that's definitely a little, and he still played good. So, yeah, I'm going to be starting him every week. I think he'll get back in the MVP category, but he's definitely like up there and as far as quarterback. I, I also have Michael Thomas coming back. I, I think he, later. He, I'm telling you, yeah, Michael Thomas. Pick, oh, but yeah, one team that's going to make it to the Super Bowl this year. It's going to be LA Rams. Junior, you're a big Stafford Junior's guy this year. Since one, you're I'm a one huge year. Stafford guy, and I, I've been a big Stafford guy. The problem is he's been with the Lions, and the Lions have, have – they never built the team around. He has a team that he needs to be successful, and as you can see how successful he's been now versus when he's with the Lions, who's absolutely atrocious. Uh, I'm a huge Stafford, Stafford guy. So, Don, I guess we – I mean, Dill, sorry. Uh, we should probably address the trade now that you have Ridley. Um, you're losing Swift, uh, getting Miles Sanders, who's been pretty MIA again last week as well. Uh, obviously, the, the the receiver upside is huge. So what you're playing at the running back, you're just going to have to rely on Mixon. Uh, well, I have Gaskin. Gaskin. Yeah. Obviously, and Sanders. So I'll probably, And I also picked up Darrell Williams that no one talked about. <laughs> Who's so you'll be uh, flexing. Oh, Pittman's gone now. Yeah, right. Yeah, but uh, I, I would, I would normally be flexing Calvin Ridley. It just he just happens to have a bye this week. Yeah, yeah. But I'll have yeah, him rest of the season. Uh, so, like realistically, how it's going to work out is I'm going to start Devonta Adams, Terry McLaurin every week. I'm going to flex Calvin Ridley every week, and literally just the, between Gaskin, Darrell Williams, and Miles Sanders, whichever the two of them proves to be the most reliable, I'll flex the other one, and then Michael Thomas comes back, and then I could just 
I can fly. My receivers can be Devonta Adams, Terry McLaurin, Calvin Ridley, and Michael Thomas. So I can literally just have those all those four in a lineup. So that's like ideal. Um, I'm kind of just like figuring out my last my like my last spot at this point, which is what I've been doing for the past couple weeks. Obviously, I'm over oh. two on it, <laughs> but hopefully, I get it right this week. Yeah, I think hopefully down the road you don't have to start four running backs. Obviously, you you, you feel the probably same way in a PPR league, but you have Ridley, you can get Thomas and hopefully going. And then you'll have you'll have a four-headed freaking receiving core, you know. You just gotta pick your two running backs. Yeah, I'll be fine. I'm actually kind of happy I get Ridley's bye week out of the way now. So then like it's done. Yeah. We're not even we're not it's even done, we're like, yeah. we're like a, not even a third away through the season. So then I'll have like yeah. he's a wide receiver one the rest of the year. I think the bigger problem is playing junior this week, right? That the coming yeah. matchup right now. Yeah, you know what? I'm listening. I got I got Debo Samuel by week. I got Chris Carson so, might okay. be out again. Uh, Madison might be returning back to his RB two spot because Cook's coming back. So it could be it could be a good week to play me. I'd love to see Dill win with the with the four headed freaking running back core. That's awesome. I think I could definitely beat him. Um, like yeah, absolutely, it's gonna be a close matchup again. I think yeah, I think this is gonna be a fun matchup. Match. Um, yeah. if if Miles Gaskin gives me a, a third of what he gave me last week, I think Junior's in trouble. Um, but if he gives me the zero point yeah. three, then that's well, no good. Depends on depends on Jackson and then Sanders like either being godly or just uh, normal. I don't know. I think Stafford could really light up the Giants. Sadly, because I'm a Giants fan, I think I heard. They do. And I think yeah, so uh, Devonta Adams. Guy. Devonte Adams always destroys the Bears, and he always destroys the Lions. Two teams in the division, so hopefully the he does should that. light up the Kansas City secondary. Oh my god! Oh, that's gonna be yeah. I mean, that's he's gonna be airing the ball out left and right. Um, I'll get the jump start with Miles Sanders tomorrow versus Tampa Bay. Um, that'll probably be a shootout. So hopefully he actually did catch five or six passes. So I guess that's one yeah. upside. And then Darrell Williams. Ooh. There's uh my pickup of the week. I, I mean, need big things out of him. I spend like 50 fab budget, but I usually don't spend that much this early. But I feel like he was like a, he's a locked in guy with volume for at least the next couple of weeks. And running backs are kind of hard to find at the moment. So got me got me a good one. Running back is definitely a scarce position this year. So Carson is um questionable. Like he's he has a chance of coming back yeah, this week. No, he's questionable. Let's say they're good to go. Are you playing them? Are you he's confident? Be him? To be, I mean, I have to be. Because who else am I going to start? Naeem Hines, again, who was yeah. 1.3. I don't understand. They, they put well, Mark if Cook Madison is good to go, go, you're out on Madison, him. correct? Right, that's what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, listen, if Cook, if Cook, Cook and Carson not might not be fully healthy. So. If Cook doesn't play, I'm 100% starting Madison, even if Carson's healthy. No yeah. debate. He's and then awesome. on Dylan's side, uh, P. Ryan has COVID nineteen. I guess he's out for the week, mm-hmm. even if Mixon's not ready to go. Yeah, we'll so I'll just there. play. I'll just play Evans if that's the case. But Mixon should be fine. Who's he next would... in line in, in Cincinnati though? There's no it's Evans. anymore. Oh, oh, oh! This Evans. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, but it's not going to be. Okay, him. So you picked him up today. Yeah, it's not going to be him. Chris Mixon. Evans. That's right. I mean, Mixon. Mixon played literally played this week and scored a touchdown, so I think he'll be fine. True. Yeah, yeah. Piran kind of went off without it in his place. He, well, he didn't go off, but he, he they both solid. yeah they both found the end zone. I think this is probably a matchup yeah. of the week potential. This is gonna be fun. We we both got some firepower. He's got Cup canceling out my Matt Stafford too. So I I think Daryl can do just as good, if not better, than Ch. Honestly, I think yeah. I was the, I'm not really big on Ch better. to be honest. I think like Ch is kind of just like a system solid, guy. But- yeah. I don't think he's great. Um, Lamar Jackson. He's versus, system, yeah. Oh my God! Bet the over in that game. Uh, Ravens versus Chargers. That's going to be a gazillion points that game. It's got to yeah. be. Um, uh, that, honestly, that's to be honest with you. That's where I hope. Well, that's where I see most of my points coming from. This yeah, you need the, you know. need a couple Lamar Jacksons yeah. to Mark Andrews again. Yeah. Is what you need. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I mean, James has a good Connor, head who, for the end zone. Who's oh. Connor playing this weekend? He's he's filling in my flex for Debo Samuel. Arizona is playing Cleveland, First which all, is just, a tough matchup. Just thinking about the fact that I'm able to flex Debo Samuel. That's pretty fucking yeah. nasty. Yeah, James Conner is a good flex too. He yeah. didn't catch a lot of passes, but he normally week. gets the goal line carries. This is my first. He's become a good flex. And, yeah. I'm actually happy you don't have line. Debo Samuel because he's one of those guys that can put up like 35. Yes, he can put up. He can put up. Of course, can't trust Brandon Cooks anymore though. Brandon Cooks is the best player uh, on his team, but the team is just yeah. so bad. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. I mean, and also, kind of I think we need to mention about Chris Carson or just the Seahawks in general. Um, the Seahawks now have a uh, what's his name, Geno Smith, at QB. 
Yeah. Um, but they so, I, mean, I like what I saw. You guys, did you guys watch the game? He looked I, I okay in the first, the one drive. I mean, it's, it's hard to tell. But, but yeah, I might, think they Chris, might run it a lot more now. Carson probably not, takes a hit. Um, no, I, th- I see. I think it's the opposite. I think he's going to take it. Because they're not going to throw it as much now, I feel like. But I, I also know. think, yeah, but like if if we're sitting here saying this, I think like opposing defenses know that as well. That's true. Yeah. I, I think it also helps you have Steelers D. Um, they probably get an interception or two on Gino, I would assume. Um, That's why I actually picked them up. That might be a shitty game because Roethlisberger uh, looks really bad, too. Actually, no, I didn't pick them up. I lied. I picked them up my league. Yeah, I think this, this is a fun matchup. I'm, like, excited it's for this. It's going to be a good matchup, yeah. It's going to be a good matchup. It's actually a good matchup on paper. It even says, look, look, even for once, the projections are, are even on par. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm going to pick, even this, I'm gonna pick Bill the upset. This would be big for me. Taking the win. Yeah, I think what I was going to say is another segment that we should start doing is we should place picks on who we think is going to win each matchup and then to compare our records at the end just for fun. Yeah, that'd be cool. See how we go so, each week. It, we, at I'll the end, take, we can, uh, track, we can week go two. through them. All right, I'll take the upset on this one. I think, uh, I think we have one more match to touch on. It would just cast in uh, Luke Caduccio, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, if you go back to last week. Sadly, Cass oh, failed, right failed, to, failed to break 100, I believe. Yeah, that's his second or third time. Oh, yeah, Tucci and Danny didn't either. Um, I just feel so bad for, for Luca Duccio with the injuries. I mean, this guy can't get a yeah. fucking break, and now Saquon's hurt. Still in third place. Um, yeah, Saquon's hurt. I mean, he yeah, he's pulling it off, though. I mean, yeah, Damian Williams, he's picking up, like, backup running backs, whatever you can do to plug and play, and it's working. Uh, Robert Woods looked fucking awesome. Najee Harris looks awesome. So like the guys that he had, Jalen Hurts looks solid. Um, so like everyone Jaylen that he has is, is okay. Um, enough to get it done. Like just like imagine he had the whole team he drafted, which sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, at least he has his handcuff in Devontae Booker. He might you know provide some value. And uh, Booker looks good, bro. Obviously. Game, so. what, what do you have to say about cast team um, least amount of the points in the league by a large margin, which I don't think anyone expected. I thought he had an okay draft. I know you weren't big on his draft, um, but just yeah, moving maybe, forward, maybe. I mean, the bright sides in his team are Ezekiel Elliott and Justin Jefferson. Other than that, I'm not seeing as much consistency as we anticipated. I mean, he's definitely made some moves. Uh, Elliott's found his form. I play him this week. I know he has got Davis out. His freaking flexes just have, have just kind of diminished. He, he doesn't look great at the flex position. Um, that's killing him. And then, of course, his QB1 is still a problem. It's even worse now with Jones out. So he's going to have to start Heineke, I assume, unless he's going to reach for someone else. Uh, does Oh, he had Bolden, so he must have dropped him because Bolden's been on the waiver wire. Um, Julio has to get back and healthy. He definitely can use him uh, sooner than later for a flex option. Robinson is, is in that scenario where his team sucks, which is like um, – I forget who we were talking about before, but sometimes the situation of the team can be a big factor. And I think he's just – you know, an outcome of that, Justin Fields does not look good. I thought he would have looked way better. But maybe it takes some time for Justin Fields to get acclimated to the league. Uh, Hawkinson's kind of fallen off, which isn't helping, which he was kind of helping, giving him a little boost early on. Dude, I mean, it's not even like – a lot of people are questionable, but other than losing Dan Jones, it's not like a big injury bug going on here. I know he did lose Shepard and Gallup earlier and Jones. So it's not like, I guess it's just kind of a little bit of string of bad luck on top of everything, it just, um, which isn't uncommon for, for him, for Cass, right? In this league. The it's just players just aren't putting up points. <laughs> I mean, there's no easy yeah, one. It's, it's, it's just simple. It's a combination of a few things, yeah. I, I don't know how he gets out of this. I'll be honest. That's the only thing I, I don't. I'm not trying to like make him upset or, or you know get down, but I know he's going to do whatever he has to do. I know that. I know we'll probably have a good matchup this week, um, but things aren't looking too bright, unfortunately, at the moment. So I don't, I'm not trying to hit him. Hit him when he's down, you know. Got some hope on his bench, I think. I think so. But calories on a buy this week. Uh, he's finally showing up. Shepard should be back. At some point, can he stay healthy is a question. But I think Jones might be able to play this week. But do you trust him coming off an injury? Uh, it's tough, man. Feel bad. I do feel bad, actually. And then uh, Luke has a great team, which is, again, the injuries. But he's made some great waiver pickups. Amy Williams was a huge waiver pickup. Yeah, he has a deep Booker. team. 
he could deal with the injuries. Right, like he's yeah, a deep team to make the job. plugins when he needs to, which is like that's the way you you bounce back and handle these type of things. Mostert could come back at some point this season. Although that that backfield's a freaking that's disaster. a backfield I don't want any part of. No, them the New England absolutely two backfields that weren't part of. Uh, I I think Luke's still I think he's he's definitely in contention for playoffs. Obviously, he already is, but he's definitely one of our six playoff teams at least in that at least on that brink. You know, he he could fall out, but he just has to get these guys staying healthy because he can't afford. You know, there's a certain point where you just can't you can't navigate it, and then bye weeks, you know. So it's it's tough. Um, Joey, what do you think about cast? Because for me, it's like the same thing almost every week. And then, no. Uh, man, he's had a rough couple of weeks. I mean, not the best yeah. start, but yeah, I would like to say he doesn't have that good of a quarterback. Um, Daniel Jones, right? Is his quarterback? It was. Was. It uh, was. So, I mean, yeah, he is. He is Zeke. I mean, he's obviously not performing well, but now he's starting to get back up. I mean, Hawkinson's supposed to be performing, but he's not doing shit. Um, otherwise, I mean, not the worst team, but I mean, I'm sure he'll. I mean, he's a very good fantasy player, so I'm sure he'll make a comeback at some point. Yeah, he's got some good um, fundamentals that can carry him through, but just filling in those holes and, you know, kind of sucks. You know, and Fulio can get back. Maybe Gallup can be something in that offense. Callaway. So Shepard was a solid flex before he went down. I, I, QB1's got to get figured out, though. That's I think it's still his biggest thing that to fix. He's been trying to fix that. Uh, so maybe the trade wire. Sure, we'll see a trade from him at some point. Uh, and then let's look at the next week's matchups. So that's every matchup from last week. Uh, as far as standings go, I know we do our own power rankings, but this is where we're at. It's up on the screen. Joey's at first. Uh, it's the only 5 0 team. It goes all the way down. We have one four and one team in junior. There's four of us at three and two. We're just in the playoffs. And then one, two, three, four, two and threes on the outside looking in. Then we have Chris at one and four, very unluck, unlike, unlucky. We lost the and then Luke is the true 0 and 5 team, which she actually, no offense, belongs there. Um, from the from the draft on, he's just made absolutely yeah, ridiculous, ludicrous freaking decisions. So, what? Lost your audio. I can hear you. I'm here, bro. Um, and then next week's matchups, we already went over Dills. We didn't Junior, really talk about Big. We didn't talk about Big. Um, big versus playing Tuch Cass and, next week. Big versus Tucci and Danny. Oh, we didn't go no. over Tucci and Danny. But yeah, yeah so that, was, the cover before that was a, that was a destruction. Um, Tucci and Danny didn't really have a dog in this fight. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're, I like their team on draft night. Don't really like it so much now. Um, Mike Williams is the wide receiver one for the Chargers. Keenan Allen is a wide receiver two. Um, that's a guaranteed fact. Uh, I don't think they knew that coming in, nor did many people. Uh, A.J. Brown can't stay healthy, and he's not putting up the A.J. Brown numbers we know and love. Deontay Johnson is their best receiver who they just traded away. Uh, Deontay Johnson and Emmanuel Sanders, who are their most consistent receivers, they just traded them both away. And uh, they have no running backs besides Christian McCaffrey, who is banged up and questionable this week. Uh, with Kyler Murray putting up a human-like game and not the 40 points they rely on, I don't see these guys winning many games, which sucks because I like these guys and I think they're smart managers, but I think they went about the draft the wrong way. Um, what do you think about their team? I mean, this is this is rough. Yeah. I know that, that we do have at least a little bit of breaking news on it that uh, it's not official yet, but there's a trade that's pending. And I think it's, a, I'm pretty sure it's about to go through. Could be wrong. We have to wait on the rest of the committee here, but uh, let me just pull it up real quick. 
They've been asking me to trade well, one of the one of the one of the committee player obviously is part of the trade being Tooch, but it's Deontay Johnson and Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, he's giving up for Cortland Sun and Josh Jacobs, so he's really trying to get at least an RB one. Um, but yeah, has to give up a, a huge RB a wide receiver one to do is it. Is he trading with Luke? Luke Legs, yep. Luke Legs. Yeah, he, he, he might, trade, he he might the break the record for the most trades. I season. think Luke's actually winning this one. I think Luke is winning this one, but. Um, you know, again, my point is, at what point does it stop? But I guess it's when he's eliminated from the, the freaking contention. But uh, yeah, no, he's, he's definitely winning this one. But he's that's how desperate they are for a uh, RB one. So um, I, it's tough game way, Deontay though. But they have they have Keenan Allen and Antonio Brown. So they really or AJ Brown. They really need AJ Brown to get back to form. That's obviously what they're going to bank on now. Uh, Josh Jacobs will help them. That'll be big. Devontae Smith. I'm not sure why they didn't play him. I thought they were pretty set on finally flexing the guy. I think you're I think you can comfortably flex Devontae Smith. I thought that last week. So definitely I think you could now. Um, Sanders is now gone too. So those are both flexes gone. Sutton had a good week though. Sutton can put up some points. I don't know what happens he when Jerry Judy comes back, but not consistent. Yeah, definitely a flex option. I, I mean you have Sutton and Smith in the flex. QB. Yeah, I think Luke does win the trade, but it doesn't. Adele, I mean, Nick and Danny does. They don't get worse. I think they just get a little buff in their RB section, especially yeah, if AJ Brown. It, so make, it still doesn't make Luke's team an appealing trade. Do you think Luke traded eighty-five times that he would have somewhat of an appealing team? But I don't think it's moved. Yeah, but again, they, their know? depth is tough. And who the hell are they going to play at RB two? They have this keep plugging in McKissick, where right. Alex Jeff Collins, when Carson's coming back. Well, they keep trying uh, to Gibson's for Jones, taking over the back. They don't have anything appealing. They want, like, yeah. Um, I don't get the Trey Sermon thing. They just don't like them there. They're not even giving them touches. Ronald Jones is like yeah, literally Ronald Jones and Trey he, Sermon are yeah. the same players in different different backfields. Yep. Uh, and then oh, actually, they also have. Uh, or I think they must. Have, they might have dropped Tyson Williams, but he's the same thing in the in the Ravens backfield. They have three solid running backs. Just just won't get play. Won't get touches on their team. Mm -hmm. McCaffrey will be back. Do we know when? It's come, we're getting close. To Questionable this return. week. I don't know if he's going to play or not. If not, probably so definitely really, next week. I can see the logic here. They need to string a win or two together before that happens. That's that's the key. They can't fall behind too much. Um, I, I could see the end pitcher though, where they can. I mean, with Kyle Murray, McCaffrey, Allen, Brown, Jacobs. They, that's that's enough. Am I wrong? I think I think Murray alone can win you a week, just like any of these other quarterbacks. So. Yeah, I know they were willing to take uh, Gibson for Allen. That's still on the table, but um, probably not going to do that now. But uh, and then you have uh, Nick. Oh, so this is the battle of the uh, the co-owners. We didn't really even address that. I, I didn't really. I don't know why that didn't cross my mind. Uh, well, we talked about co-owners struggling in this league for the last couple of years, um, but I think if anything. It, these these are the two that could probably pull it off though, Dill, right? Retain Big and Nick Satolio. They seem to have a good chemistry. And they're not even hitting an all cylinders here. 153 points and their their team actually underperformed, really. It was just three people, four people that carried them. So um I I like the I said this from the start. I like their team from the draft. Uh, I think they only got better with the Luke Liguori trade. I think that's another trade that he lost. Um, the fact that they ended up getting Jonathan Taylor at a low, because um, I think he's only going to start uh, heating up. And uh, that's exactly what he did. Um, I know they traded away Calvin Ridley, uh, which is kind of rough because they took a hit of receiver a little bit. Um, but I think Lockett could give them some production. Sadly, OBJ is not doing much because Baker sucks. Uh, but other than that, like, their running backs are ridiculous. The fact that they have Nick Chubb, Jonathan Taylor, and David Montgomery will be back in a few weeks. I mean, those three are insane. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I think they have some flyers at receiver on the bench. Maybe a Bateman, uh, maybe a Jalen Waddle, someone like that. Um, and, yeah, they get to flex Chubb a Hubbard against the McCaffrey owners, which is always a slap in the face, and they could do that yeah. until uh, McCaffrey comes back. Yeah. So, I think – with Josh yeah, Allen and, and MVP form, they have enough firepower on that offense to like 
really make a run in this league. Um, they're three and two in fifth place right now, and I could see them moving up. I know they got a big matchup versus Sal this week. I don't know if there's going to be a nice big versus uh, Sal commissioner versus a, uh, you know, other member of the league rivalry type thing, and it should be fun. Yeah, I kind of see two teams on the same boat. Just you know, one with the <laughs> hurting at the running back core, the other one hurting at the receiving core. And um, that they, if they can navigate a few wins, like I said, they got they get some of these guys back, and they can really push for a run. So, you know, and two and three is not definitely not anywhere in, in a bad spot at the moment. So, no, nah, the whole league is within. Like, if <laughs> if you if you look at me, the points four or lower, but if, if you look at me, I'm in eighth, and I have more points than every single person ahead of like in, ahead of me besides uh, Don. Like, I have more points than you. I have more points than Cass. I have more points yeah. than Big, and I have more points than Luca Duccio. So, one win, I could literally jump from eight to three. Same with Sal behind me. Same with Christian McCaffrey. I mean, this is it's so early that it's really anyone's yeah. game. No one really is breaking away yet, I guess, besides Joey. Um, but yeah, it's really, really like any given week, it's close. The playoffs aren't having really sh- took shape yet. Uh, but I think we could, it's fun to, you know. Yeah kind of predict where people are going to end up. And sometimes you see teams like catch fire at the end. Sometimes you see teams like start off hot and then drop. Um, hopefully for Luke Liguri catches some fire sometime soon. <laughs> he also has one waiver dollar left. Oh my God. This poor guy. <laughs> what is he spending? He's trying like, everything. I'm kind of curious. Oh, a guy that just got spent on again. He spent what it all on he, he spent it all on Eli Mitchell and then he dropped Eli Mitchell <laughs> and Tujan Danny someone spent uh, but Danny uh, yeah. also spent money, so he. Can we look at the fab Elijah offers? Mitchell. Click yeah, on the fab offers. Elijah Mitchell has I a nice fab in one season. On your computer, you got to do it. It's pretty sure. That was part one. Yeah. Oh, look at all the offers that were all. So he got picked up again, but this time for eighty six dollars. Oh my god! I oh, know this is no, no. This is when this is when he originally picked them up. So he spent eighty six when everyone bidded for him, which at the end of the day it looked like he kind of needed to. I mean, not eighty one, but he. You know, for, for who? Or need this is when it originally uh, Elijah Mitchell took over that backfield and was going off. Uh, literally, literally one, two, three, that's way four, too five, much. six. That's way nine, too much. Eight, nine out of eight. 12 people in the league bidded for Elijah Mitchell. I don't Mitchell. think he understood like what the, the fat bunch does. Like, I don't know. It's like 86 is way too and much. And then he dropped them, I assume, last week, Dill, right after Trey, Trey was playing a little bit, I guess. Yes. He was. Hold on, I want to see the top. Where, why, why can't we find where he got picked up? He just got picked up again. I swear I saw it today. Yeah, by $44. $44. You see it? Because I'm not seeing it. Tooch and Danny picked him up. Yeah, not sure why I'm $44. seeing that on here, but he got he picked up again on for my radar. Or so. so this guy has been bidded in a total of, what, 120, 130 bit fab dollars through two people? Yep. And now Luke is uh, broke. So that's the story that um, I think we have. Uh, let's say, I'd say from Luke down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's eight of us or, or oh, Chris as well. I think there's nine of us who are going to be competing for those last four spots. I think, I think Joey and junior are locked, whether it's one, two, one, three, four, five, six. I think they're in, I think they're going to be a lock for the playoffs personally. Obviously it's not guaranteed, but that's, that's my feeling. I think all nine of us will be fighting for those last four spots. It's going to come. It's going to get. You'll see some separation in the next couple of weeks, but I think if it'll you be look at the, if you look at the numbers, I'm pretty much locked in for for second place at least for another week because I'm ahead on points four. Even if I lose, yeah, Junior's points four helps four a lot. And two, and nobody really gets spot. Ask me. It's gonna be interesting, and then like players like like Cass and even still myself and. Uh, and Tuch and Danny and 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 Big and, and Nick, they need to. We need we need more 150, 160 weeks, especially you know, um, you know Nick and Tuch being at two and three, they they definitely need to to pick up their points for. They need some big weeks to string together because obviously that does play a factor later on. Um, definitely does. But and, you know, with the, with the two flex league, we've talked about it. It's not hard to bounce back from that. Just you know, at what point do you get that going? Um, so. To me, every every freaking match definitely matters, man. Even like if Luke if Luke ends up zero and seven, his matches are still going to matter because they're just going to be so. It's going to matter for the rest of the league, no matter what. So, hopefully, he doesn't give up even if it goes that route. Uh, 
but we, we, we don't let it. So our league is I was gonna say pretty much you, proof. Well, we have the so, contract yeah. and you have to play full strength no matter what. Correct. So we'll, we'll probably, we probably will do it. The league will naturally do a better job than Luke will anyway. So, yeah. And then it, I think the biggest thing to look at is the, is the bye weeks coming in. Uh, week seven seems to be a detriment. Like these the next two weeks after this week seem to get even worse, but we'll, we'll touch on that next week. Um, I literally have two of my starting players even even available next week. I might not have a starting roster next week, um, the week seven. But um, luckily, we're only in week six. I'm going to worry about that. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to want to touch on in general? Next week matchups. Any? Uh, we usually we go through. We definitely usually go through matchup of the weeks. If you guys want to pick one, I actually um, think. Um, I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, look I, these I think and we already we already touched on it, but I think mine and Dylan's gonna be the matchup of the week. Uh, right behind that, I think I would like to see or keep an eye on the duos, the uh, co-owner matchup. No, that was last. It week might not be the matchup happened. of the week. Oh, it already happened. It was this week. Yeah, that was that was the oh, one that okay. just happened. Yeah, never mind that one. Um, I actually think Joey and and Chris Cameron because although it, it's a good matchup on paper, one is one and four, one's five and zero. Oh, but I think Chris could be the one to knock you off of your winning streak, Joe. Chris actually and has I, more I points than somebody. Joey this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so true. It, this Chris could be a his very good team. He's just honestly yeah, but this a be a tough week for me. That's that's gonna be a dog fight. That I I, I got the over in that matchup. Yeah, one thirty two yeah. and one forty five. I think they're both going over those numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. And Dylan, Dylan, Dylan really both matches are great. Your your matchup is outstanding. You too. So those two matches are by far good. And we can't sleep on uh, Luke Luke A and uh, and and um, Adon's matchup. That's a solid matchup on paper. So. Yeah, that's fun too. Where's uh, where's Don at in standings? Seventh. I know, I know, on the I know outside he's looking seventh. in. He's on the yeah. But he's got he more points than almost there. everybody ahead of him. So one yep. win gets him could get him to yep. third. Literally. Yeah, that, see, that's what I'm saying. The yeah. is huge because, like I said, I'm still guaranteed. Actually, if Joey loses, I, I'm automatically go to first unless he surpasses me in points this week. But I, I'm guaranteed second even if I lose this week because of my points for yeah. Four. Unless so someone scores like 200 points, but that's the good thing. Yeah. Yeah, so we got a lot of a lot of good matchups um ahead of us for week six. I'm excited and uh thank you guys for coming out. Joey Jr., thank you for spending Ooh. a little time on the podcast. A Don, I know you had to get off early, but thank you. And uh my co host of course. Absolutely. Anyone have any last uh last words? Anything you guys want to close good luck to all. We'll see you next week. Tomorrow night, Eagles versus uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers to start the week off. Should be a fun one, guys. Perfect. Absolutely. All right. Um, so we'll see you guys next week on the podcast. And uh, don't forget to tell someone that you love them. And uh, <laughs> let's have a good rest of the season, boys. All right. Go gun, fellas. Much love. Much love. love you all. Much love. Peace.